It says in the first thing, hi, my name is. I think we got that down. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. I am Jamie from here. I am Kat. And thank you for I'm joining still a guest us. Star. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> this joining music us. is hilarious. It was like a porno. Oh my this god. Is- does this music always sound like this? This is this is the theme of uh, of the Dumb and Hungry podcast. So uh, yes, we want to get every because we want to get everyone in the mood. Damn, steel <laughs> guitar, <laughs> really bringing it. I'll tell you, steel tiny. guitar is really bringing it for this podcast. I'll tell you right now, John had the Got same. Nervous and just like. He had the same exact sentiment. <laughs> the songs like really like. Yeah, it re- we really <laughs> lead into it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, um, sexual in windows aside, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us um, with our little boxes here great on the internet. Start. Yeah, this is a great start. Thank you. Um, hello, uh, everyone, and hello, Jamie and Kat. Nice to have you on again. It's been a hello. little while since uh, we've been able to, to join together, um, and I uh, wish we could have done something in person, but uh, I think mm-hmm. I think here is fine, too. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. But how you guys doing? We should. Good. I was gonna say like last time we got together, we should do that snack thing again. That was kind of fun, we'll bring... but obviously with a different, maybe a different ethnicity or some of the raunchy crap that's being launched out. What was it like, ranch ice cream? No, <laughs> we could. I'm no, you, you pass. Hard Come pass. on. <laughs> <laughs> All variants of ranch ice cream, just for Jamie. Right. No. What were you gonna say, Jamie? Sorry. I know. I was gonna say no. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to join. That. No, that's too bad. <laughs> All right, that's fine. We'll think of something. But uh, regardless, yes, it's great to have everyone here. But yeah, just wanted to hear what, what's going on with you guys. It's I know we've kind of seen each other a little recently, and we'll get into that a little more. But just want to hear what's been going on with you guys and how you've been doing. I know, she's um, so eager. My restaurant's been only open for lunchtime because there's nobody on the campus. So it's been very mm-hmm. nice. I've been loving I've been loving having the day-only shifts, trying not to... Uh, look anything past that even though i'm making like a ton of like preparations um for the start of the school year but it's been nice like it's been more of a of a balance and stuff like that and i um and yeah like it's been fun because yeah weekends free like nights free to be able to do stuff and hang out so i've been liking that isn't it such a like a trip when you go from being available seven days a week to like definitely having a weekend off (laughs) <laughs> I think it's even crazy like when the weekend is Saturday, Sunday because you know like Tuesday, Wednesday more than half the time I would just mm-hmm. be by myself because like everybody's working everyone's like busy like no one thinks about going out on a weekday or anything mm-hmm. unless you have other industry friends mm-hmm. uh, and then at first I thought like oh I'm gonna hate it because like everyone's out and like I can't get service and blah 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 and it's honestly it's it's better because like everyone's out so everybody out like lends its own energy to your weekend and yeah so that's been kind of nice that's like the only thing i like about mm-hmm. having this corporate job is a saturday and sunday mm-hmm. off the, the things that and you then missed about oh sorry go ahead oh no I, mean, I was gonna say yeah july 4th i didn't work and july 3rd i didn't mm-hmm. work and I, I got paid and it's crazy <laughs> unheard of <laughs> it's like mind boggling yeah 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 what oh. were you gonna say i was gonna say like i miss like retail because you're like you know how you're talking about like it's like you feel everybody, you see everybody on the weekends and that's like true for everything else. So let's say that like I was back at my office job and I was doing, you know, nine to fives and stuff. But if it's like, or do I have to take a day off to go get like my oil change or do I wait till like a busy ass Saturday to like go get stuff done. But when you're in retail, it was like Tuesday morning, let's do it. Like, <laughs> and <Yeah>. nobody's there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And in a way, yeah, that kind of sucks. Like I do have to like, schedule errands and stuff like that during the weekend sometimes it's just like not feasible and i have to figure it out Mm -hmm. uh but yeah i'm liking this summer i'm like being able to take off like around like three or four o'clock to go train and to go see friends um i was gonna say this july 4th was weird because when i got into work it was wednesday so the whole Mm -hmm. time i thought it was monday 
and I'm still off. Like tomorrow's Friday. Exactly. Like, yeah. In my head. It's like where did the week yeah. go? It's like, it's, like it's gone already. Yeah. Yeah, said, but it's, I, it's back. <laughs> yeah, I, I sent emails on Monday calling it Happy Second Friday, mm. and then on Wednesdays I sent emails like Happy Second Monday, and they're like, "It is, isn't it?" And I said, "Yeah, it's so such a, it's like the most Mondayest Wednesday." <laughs> to ever feel <laughs> like, really, yeah I, I agree yeah like tomorrow doesn't feel like it should be friday it should be like wednesday and i was like mm-hmm. oh no wait tomorrow is friday like i like it's finally the weekend again but then you go back to like your normal uh like you know five day business week and it's like oh, fine i'm kind of excited <laughs> for that just to have another five day business week like just to be back i feel like the older i get the more i'm not used to like when that happens you know mm-hmm so how's it like changed for you though? Like, cause now that we're talking about like our availabilities of being like in the retail world versus like the office, like the office hour world, like you, we went and got food. When was that Saturday? On a Sunday. 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 But then when we did the little, uh, like, was it like West LA, West Hollywood tour? What was that? That was a, was that a weekday night or was that another weekend? West Hollywood, West LA. What places do uh, we go to what, again? Everson and like Gorilla. I don't know what the name of these oh, in downtown, are. Or downtown. <laughs> oh, that's downtown. Yeah, we oh, were downtown in LA. Yeah, yeah, okay. Saturday. I was like, West Hollywood. That just sounds too far. <laughs> it's a little far. Well, that was fine with me because that was that was a Saturday, right? Um, but yeah, I I definitely like it. Just felt fun to be out with friends because, like I said, like a lot before when you're you know in like a regular like industry part you know your days off like you'll be lucky if you have friends that are like available during that time Mm because usually everyone's like just getting off of work or like Mm -hmm. or you have to set it up so early so they can like Mm -hmm. mentally get ready to hang out with you or something and it's just so it's so weird it's like sad almost that you have to like your friends have to be mentally like ready to hang out with you (laughs) yeah but it's so that's why like and I think that's why, like, people with industries hang out with each other because it's like, yeah, they know that they got to live it up mm. before they go back to five more fucking days <laughs> of, like, hell. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's nice being it's nice being able to be around weekday. I mean, sorry, weekends mm-hmm. because, yeah, all your friends also work, you know, job, mm-hmm. regular jobs or it's just weekends. So you, I guess, like, you can kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Even though the corporate job could be so boring, like there's definitely yeah. stuff that I miss about um, working a retail job. Yeah, yeah, or just like you know these mom, like these these hungry like LA restaurants because I don't think I work. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm definitely not part of that scene anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now you can go with us to like night markets and stuff that are on the weekends. It's like. I remember there were days where like, oh, I should invite Jamie to this. And I'm like, oh, wait, she might be working a shift at, you know, Baltimore she restaurant. Is. Yeah. <laughs> the restaurant that not, not shall not be named. Yeah. <laughs> or like, I'm, or I'm just automatically just factored out because like, oh, she's working. She's going to be tired. Right. Or like, yeah. she can't stay out because she's got to wake up for that job. Yeah. That's a totally like valid, valid mm-hmm. thing, you know. It's like, I'm happy, but. I know that like what your situation is now. So we'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all about, um, but yeah, I, I, I liked going to that night market with you guys. I've never been, I I've been to the, did you ever, I was going to say, I, I remember asking you cat, did you ever go to the original, um, what is it? Avenue 26? 626 night market. That one. No, or no. Avenue 26. 26. Uh, what is it called? The night market? Yeah. Like the Avenue Twenty Six Night Market, really. No, it doesn't ring a bell for some reason. Yeah, it's unless um, it's called something else. I mean at, at the location that we had gone to, it was relatively short lived. So out in uh kind of the more mm. northeast location, like let's say between Lincoln Heights, you know, kinda Chinatown between that area going to Yeah. The um I think it says it's in Pico now or yeah, it, sort it, of it, it's, it's taken a whole life of its own and it's gotten it's been placed somewhere totally different than where it originally was. But on this uh, kind of, oh, wow. yeah, on this small street called Humboldt, which is more like this alleyway in like this industry area, um, there used mm-hmm. to, there was Avenue 26 Tacos that set up there. And then sometime after, a whole bunch of vendors just kind of followed suit and set up in the whole alley. And, you know, Jamie and I, we've, 
we visited there at least once, um, at least together. And, uh, we've kind of mm -hmm. tasted like a little bit of everything that was over there, but, um, but not soon after, you know, the, the, whatever the authorities or whatever came and cracked down on these guys and shut them down. Ugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I was like pissed because it's like that thing's been going on for years and even working at my old job, like, yeah, a lot of the guys would be like, Are we doing Leo's? Are we doing this place? Are we yeah. doing Burgers Never Say Die? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you just go to Avenue 26 because it was very yeah. well priced and you can get a variety. Because I would be like, Nah, I, I ate dinner or like I'd take a lunch with me to work, but oh, yeah, Avenue 26 has yes, churros. Like, right. I'll go, mm -hmm. like, and I'll eat dessert. So, like, while the guys are getting tacos, I'd go yeah. get churros yeah. or something or like maybe corn and then yeah walk around with yeah. them yeah sorry i'm looking at their instagram page right now it's like how dang how have i not heard of this spot but okay yeah, yeah mean, we should try that like i said it's taking a life of its own a lot more people kind of joining in there in a totally different area of town now but mm -hmm. i mean yeah mm -hmm. it was uh it was it was the place to be i think so that's fine yeah that looks good that we we should have just like a google drive document of like <laughs> places to try like as much as i like the instagrams that we and stuff that we send each other i feel like it, it definitely gets lost sometimes like remember that one time we we're like no i don't remember yeah, that I one <laughs> like at all <laughs> yeah i mean there's so many restaurants opening up every day mm -hmm. every week every month that i mean it is really hard it's like collecting cards mm -hmm. it's like really mm -hmm. hard you know to uh it's really hard to just keep up and um i think i used to be a little bit more obsessive about it but now i'm just like eh, if i i'll, I'll get yeah. to Eventually. it eventually yeah like when okay. i can get to yeah. it yeah because it is definitely it is definitely worth its while when you are like with people mm -hmm. so like i like jamie says like i used to be obsessed with like going to all these new places and it was like okay like i can go over there by myself like i'll try like you know like nine different things but then now it's like i don't know if my stomach just can't handle like mm -hmm. nine different things by myself but also it's like the cost of it yeah like you know inflation is a bitch mm -hmm. but then it's also great to see like what people say about these things that you eat or that you're trying and you know when we went to the Bangkok lady it was like it was like really fun to hear your guys's um critique uh, or opinions on that product and but it was also especially cool when we all tried it because we all had all tried it for like the very first time together you know yeah. we're popping each other's cherries <laughs> yeah no those are always fun i mean like it's nice when um when you go to a place on your own and you know you like it and you want to share it with someone and they enjoy it too but it's a real different experience when everyone tries it out for the first time mm -hmm. and even more when mm -hmm. we all really like it like we did in this yeah. case. So, yeah. So, and I think that's like the, the point of going to places with your friends. Like, yeah. you know, I think some people have it like all wrong. Like, I don't really care about social media, uh -huh. but I like trying new food mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, I actually want to go back to the Bangkok lady like on Sunday. Heck just yeah. Being like, fuck it. Just, Heck yeah. Just go and, yeah. I don't know, maybe take the subway or maybe drive. I'm not sure. But, like, I'm just like, I would actually go see her again. Yeah. It's, well, compared to the one that I had today, she is, she is still the lady. She's still, the you know, the queen of, mm. of Bangkok's. And, you know, for our listeners out there, especially our Vietnamese ones, like, sorry for butchering the name. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I want to talk about, or should we talk about our experience first? Then I could talk about the one that I had today. So on that day, like I actually took the first, uh, the Metro, they just extended the line out, uh, like from Azusa all the way to Long Beach. I think the end before was, so like the highest part was Azusa mm -hmm. and then the lowest part was, was Union. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then they just extended the, the Metro line. Mm -hmm just two weeks ago yeah. so i really wanted to like go just to see like how long it would actually take me would this be easier than a i mean there's mm -hmm. there's good and bad things like i like to i do like to be in my car because there's like ac doesn't fucking smell like piss you know um yeah. <laughs> but you know you got to pick me up and then it also only cost me like a dollar 25 or something like that yeah. and i don't know if you guys read they recently did a thing where the max you can you can spend mm. I think is around thirteen to sixteen dollars. Yeah. Where some people just had so many different changes going to all sorts of like whether Thanks. it was metro to train or metro to bus or whatever. Now it's mm -hmm. all capped. Yeah. So like yeah. you know for people that oh, wow. like live far away, so that's great for them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, it was really nice to just take the, just to really see, like, I don't know, it kind of reminded me of, like, New York, like, going through, looking mm-hmm. at all the, I don't know, just the scenes, like, the sites, like, whether it was, like, wood piled up at some industrial place or, like, a lot of really cool graffiti, like, along the walls mm-hmm. and, and the bridges and stuff. But yeah. it was nice. It was about an hour. I read a couple chapters of a book, and then, yeah, Angelo picked me up. And then first we hit up the OC, and the OC is not, actually not that far of a drive, so... Mm-hmm. It was actually pretty chill. It was, mm-hmm. and we went to uh, Lola's by MFK. Do you know what MFK stands for? Uh, it's the name. I believe it's like the name of somebody. You know, like the, like their initials like or the something. You know, um, yeah, it's like the traditional, like you know, like Michael Frank. Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever <laughs> like, it is, right? That's a K- Kevin. There you go. Like I was like Michael Francisco Kevin. Right. No, I'm just kidding. Um, actually, let me Google it so we don't, you know, get hung by. Well, she Google's that. <laughs> Tell us a little bit then um, of what what we had there. Well. I definitely want to let people know that the wait is very long. Also, depending, it's a small place. So depending on how many big parties, I mean, like you could be screwed. You could be like a table of two, Mm -hmm. but then there could be like a bunch of people of like six or eight. And then you're just fucked because you can only really sit once the tables are free. So we were waiting for a little bit. Um, Yeah. So we were waiting for like a little bit. The cool thing about it was what you got on a wait list, right, Kat? And then you were able to like Mm -hmm. get coffee and chill out. Oh, yeah, I got um, a wait list from bed. <laughs> yeah, the fact that you can do that. Right. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's you know. on their website, by the way, if anybody's listening and wants to go. I don't know a succinct way to find out. Like, they don't have any, like, FAQ on their um, mm-hmm. on their site, but we can post it in a thing later. If we find it, but mm-hmm. we'll put, you know, the links to, you know, their stuff. Oh, there, wait. Don't worry, and then they can do their own research. It's fine. I know, right? Um, Seriously. That's cool. But yeah, so um, from what you shared, Kat, this is, you know, the time we went was during like a brunch time, right? Um, um, so mm-hmm. we had a lot of brunch items, um, Filipino yeah. themed and inspired, um, you know, mm-hmm. so remind me of the, what did, what did we have? Um, so we got the uh, Ube Tres Leches French toast. Mm-hmm. That was the sweet component that we had. The savory ones that we got were the Bangu Sisig yeah. that was served with garlic uh, fried rice. And then the one that Jamie picked was the, oh no, it was the Iloko Moko. Ilo- and then uh-huh. we weren't sure if we were full enough. So we also got the Biria Chilequilas. Oh, right. And I know right. that's not typically a Filipino dish, but from what <laughs> the server was saying was that the, the owner, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. his father or himself, I can't remember, um, actually grew up in Ecuador. Right. Guatemala. Yeah. Again. Yeah, that, that was an interesting yeah. like, tidbit. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's, so, that's got to be interesting. Right. So that's why you saw, like, kind of, like, the, the inspirations. You're like, video? It's not typically, you know, Filipino. So that was kind of, like, cool to see something different. Like, if you didn't, you know, want to get, like, Longanisa burps and mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. Like... No, absolutely. <laughs> and it was still done really well. Like, mm-hmm. the, the video was yeah. really good. Yeah. 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 So, So we'll do the... Birria chilequiles, since that is, you know, again, you're going for Filipino food or something, chilaquiles and birria is not first on the list. We'll say that. (laughs) But like for me, so like chilaquiles is my favorite um, family meal in kitchens. Um, Mm -hmm. But I also like it when it's like almost like lasagna like. So it's a little bit like soft, it's all layered. Mm -hmm. And then you have like that delicious fried egg on top. This one, it was kind of like they sauced some nachos, some like crispy chips with, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then, um, you know, the video again, I think all of the components in, in it were, they balance each other out. You know, you kind of got like that sort of like smoky, like really deep, like red flavor of birria and everybody out there yes i said red flavor it's like how i describe <laughs> like red peppers or like like paprika it's like things that you think of that are like in the red pepper and dried family mm-hmm. like i like to call it red interesting, like yeah. red flavor That's interesting. <laughs> like that. um but i i did i did enjoy that and then the video was really tender mm. and then the, i would say the the cheese was there like queso fresco and maybe crema on top of it and just like that they probably like uh, wash their onions so the onions weren't so like pungent. Yeah, I thought it was perfect. It was mm. like a good, easy um, piece to have. Yeah, 
I think it was like too much crema. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that yeah. like whoever had it was like a heavy person. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, because it's just like I like to think of everything like you know like um, that works all in, in unison with like textures mm-hmm. and stuff. And mm-hmm. I understand where the guy was coming from. Like, yeah, we need the consomme from the video, and then we need the beef, and then we need the cheese. And it's like we already you already have like a wet component. I mm-hmm. think like mm-hmm. just a squirt, like instead of a ladle yeah. would have done or like instead of being like yeah like just like you know like i don't know maybe like if he did it another method like yeah. i don't know if it was just like super thin or maybe like spread you it know out. like the sauce was just super yeah or like maybe just do like little dots mm. or something like that mm-hmm. just, i was like uh, I-, I liked it because but yeah i'm also the type that would you know freaking spoonful of sour cream and get another one like yogurt I'm just weird that way. I like the flavor of sour cream and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was like, but I, I mean, I liked it. It was good. You know, like we were still hungry. We could have mm-hmm. eaten another dish and, and we did it. Uh, I think if I was to like, would I order it again? Maybe if I was like hung over, mm-hmm. okay, I think I would have gotten like the whole bangus, um, from like, if I was to be back there for brunch. Okay. Oh, MFK's Modern Filipino Kitchen. Oh, well, that makes... There you go. <laughs> that makes sense. And then AC is the name of the uh, restaurateur, mm. I believe. So, Because he also has another location at the... It's not like Lola's, but it's at the Steelcraft, right. I think, in Bellflower. In Bellflower, right. Yeah, so, when we were... Yeah, when I was we can looking, head out there, too. Yeah, when I was looking for, um, you know, the, the restaurant, I was searching for MFK... And so it brings up those results, like in Bellflower, and it had one in Anaheim too, mm-hmm. or something. But um, mm-hmm. which is different, right, from uh, Lola's um, for mm-hmm. that spot. So yeah, just gotta be careful about that. But good, thanks for that real time follow up. You know, um, yeah. But yeah, the the chilaquilas were um, real nice. I think I'm with Cat. I think I like more in that con, like just more leaning into that. A uh, little bit of sourness and tanginess that um, goes with, uh, with the savoriness of the the beef. Um, I don't know. I thought I thought that was great uh, overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if if you're saying you're going to go after a hangover. I don't know if you're going to drive all the way down there, for a hangover, but... <laughs> especially Jamie, <laughs> unless she's hungover at my house. And That's right. Drive if you over happen there. to be in the area, then sure, but. Probably not going to take the train yeah. down. To... I mean, it is good. It's pretty rich. Like if it's just one person, you know, like or two yeah. people, like whatever we had was definitely enough for two people. It was like more than mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. Because um, we only technically ordered two savories, mm-hmm. right? Well, yeah. And one mm-hmm. sweet. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah, I think next go around, I would probably do, yeah, the whole bangus because I saw a lot of those just being taken out quick. Yeah. That, yeah, that looks good. So speaking of the bangus, we, then, we had that too, right? Uh-huh. Um, but as a, in, yeah. in a different kind it's of pre- sisig, preparation, yeah. something, yeah, as a sisig. Mm-hmm. So a, mm-hmm. a sisig is typically a, a pork dish, right? You got um, kind of yes. mince or chopped pork, but like with peppers, onions, um, that sort of mm-hmm. thing. But but now like instead, up their menu again. But instead, you have a, uh, yeah, it's with sisig, yeah. which is um, fried. Go ahead, sorry. No, it's uh, it's. Milk. I'm bad on the timing. It's milkfish, I guess. <laughs> right, that's what it is. Um, so. I think so. That's Gosh, right. it's like I have. It's like I know other cuisines better than I know my own ethnicities cuisines yeah. Yeah. or cuisine, but it's you know because it's like I think it's just one of those things because it's so it's like such a part of your foundation and then less like you're seeking out like the history of your you know your ancestry it's like you kind of it's just common knowledge so you don't really like think about like what is it really made out of like to me bangus is bangus like it could be made out of trout it could be made out of salmon like i don't care it's delicious you know (laughs) all right but bangus i don't know about salmon no, yeah, probably not salmon, but uh, let's see. Fried fish served on a seasoning plate with chopped red onions, egg, bell peppers, and topped with fried garlic. Like, how did you feel about the egg mixed in, like, almost like it was, what are those things yeah. called, like a skillet? Almost like a soft scramble, I mean, in there. 
I think. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say it's like a French omelet almost. I forgot the term, but I'm just tired. But yeah. there's like a term for like that sort of coddled mm-hmm. egg type mm-hmm. of treatment. And cocotte? Uh, it's basically called like in. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, no, absolutely. I liked it. It was like acidic. It was bright. It was. It wasn't too fishy. Mm-mm. It was soft. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, like I think like the crispiness was kind of like the vegetables really. Like the vegetables weren't mush. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I that think nice. that that was a conscious decision to keep like the vegetables kind of crisp and the fish and the egg soft because I think that they know like if we cook it down too much, it's just like too much mush. Mm. Yeah. I think the one you saw kind of being passed around is the bang silog. Mm-hmm. So I think it was just, you know, like you said, like you just saw whole fish, like, right. you know, mm-hmm. being shot out of the kitchen and then served with the same sides that we got. It's like garlic rice with cherry tomatoes and green onions and a sunny side egg. Right. Which is a typical mm. layout yeah. of a silog, yeah. you know, dish. Yeah. Uh, just with a yeah. different meat. But um, yeah. Yeah. I, the tradition, again, I, I think I'd mentioned like traditionally or depending on the region you're in i think in the philippines there may be preparations that include or don't include uh the egg in there um again it's prepared with pork but it may or may not have the egg so like um Mm -hmm. i don't know like when i was in the philippines earlier this year it's like um there were like in manila there were some restaurants that um that didn't have it you know um but mm-hmm. when we ventured a little farther out, you know, province or something, uh, there are some that did, you know. So mm-hmm. um, obviously, like having an egg, just at least here, is just automatically calls for breakfast, right? It's breakfast. I mean, it's like <laughs> so it makes sense to just put it in there, whether or not it's meant to be a, the traditional kind of uh, preparation. But yeah, um, but yeah, I think mm-hmm. I think bangus, uh, the fish itself, just on its own, yeah, I think it's uh, a staple for sure. Like in in the Filipino like menu. So um, to have it, mm-hmm. I think next time, if or when we do go back, we'd have mm-hmm. it um, as we like, should try it. the whole yeah. fish for sure. Yeah. Yeah. When I go to Turo Turo's, that's what I get. Like I okay. get, or I'm sorry, point points or like, you right. know, Pinoy Pinay for my orange, Your Filipino fast orange food County slash LA people. Of, yeah. yeah, for sure. That's, mm-hmm. that's typically what I get, even if it's extra, you know, with the barbecue skewers or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's a must try. How do you but describe yeah. the the taste of of the bangus? It's it's so hmm. it's it's definitely vinegary. Yeah, like that's part of the. But like, I feel like if I said that to people, they would be you know kind of put off by yeah. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they'd be like, so it's like to, a pickle, and it's like to it me, it's like a lean like a white fish. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's that, not like salmon. That, you know, salmon's like really fatty or mm-hmm. like. Uh, mm-hmm cod or halibut and like it's not like really flaky it's like a flake in big chunks it like flakes in Mm -hmm. small Mm. like in small pieces like the flakiness is really fine yeah Mm -hmm. and then there's just like little really little bones like yeah that's the thing you gotta be careful about yeah for sure yeah my parents i remember what they would try to like my grandma would always like spend so much time it's almost like declawing a crab like so much work you know, and then mm-hmm. like when I started mm-hmm. getting older, I'd do it myself, and then I would end up like choking on the bones. And my parents would make me swallow rice to get it down. I know because <laughs> no. it's like it's sure. not like pin bones. You can't you know? get it exactly. Yeah, it's not yeah, like, they're uh, not like pin bones. They're really like thin just bones. really thin. Yeah, I mean, if it, if you were doing that with yeah. a tilapia, yeah, it'd be a totally different story. You know, um, with the, yeah, with mm-hmm. larger bones, but yeah, no, these are. It's like not as soft as it sounds. Oh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna creep myself out. It's like it's almost like swallowing like a hair, but the hair is like not as pliable right. yeah if that makes absolutely. sense absolutely i think that's a good way of like... describing it <laughs> sure is but yeah i looked it up it is milkfish mm. yeah yeah so yeah so but like i would say bungalows is like my favorite because it's vinegary but it's also like savory at the same time mm-hmm. and i think you definitely with the frying process you cut the sharpness of the uh vinegar but it's still kind of there yeah Mm-hmm. So if, if you really like vinegar, then I would highly recommend like this dish to try. Mm. Then of course, like with the rice and like all the other things to kind of balance it out, it's like it's perfect. Yeah. Like it's if we were to like we were talking about like my you know death row dish, like other than my mom's sinigang, it would totally be like bangus. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
totally. Let's see, what's the other things that we had? Um, we also, we considered the adobo fried rice omelet, but we went with the e-loco moco. How did you mm. guys feel about that one? I like that one. I mean, I love country fried steak. Like, I order it most of the time when I'm at a diner or something. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good uh, gauge of how good a, a diner is legit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I and I wanted to get it without the gravy because, like, you know, I didn't know how travel time was going to be. Because mm-hmm. there are times where, like, I'll, you'll just see you sitting on the pass and you're like, I know that's my food. And they, these mm-hmm. fuckers are just talking. God mm-hmm. damn it. <laughs> just run my okay. food. There's so many times where I, like, I know that's my food and they're just fucking front of the house people shooting the shit. Because um, I want my shit fresh. And that shit came out fresh. I also did want to try the gravy on its own because I like to. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I want more gravy. I really like to dip the meat in, and the gravy was good. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like very vinegary. Do you think was... that I was gonna say? Do you think it was very adobo-y? Oh, that's hard. I mean, I guess it also depends on like what your type of adobo is that you grew up. Like I was saying when we met up, was like I discovered that there are different um, types and colors of adobo. So mm-hmm. I'm used to the soy sauce one, and but also knowing how to make gravy, it definitely gave you that gravy like traditional like you know whatever brown gravy flavor, and then it had like a touch of something kind of like bright or acidic in it. So for me, I don't think it was adobo, but I can see where they were going with it if Mm. they were trying to make it. Because like, I I also can't imagine if he tried to make adobo as it as it is and then tried to, you know, take stuff out of it or, you know, get the essences from whatever that pot is to make it to a gravy. I also think that they made a conscious decision to make a country fried steak because whenever I think of loco moco, I just think hamburger steak, Mm -hmm. rice, mush, Mm -hmm. gravy, mush, and then they kind of wanted like a little bit crispy. The textures. You know? Yeah. I I really did, like you said, like I enjoyed the country fried steak option instead of like kind of like a mushy like hamburger patty. (laughs) I was like actually just thinking about like, you know, L and L, it's my friend's favorite dish there, and I'm like, it's just a hamburger patty, like, mm. and an egg and like gravy, like, okay, but to like elevate it to like a country fried steak, like that was that was pretty good, and be, and I think I'm glad that you asked for it without the gravy, because I think that's what led to it being like the crisp is it could have been coming out of the kitchen, yeah. But we also have a comment on how stuff came out of the kitchen so fast, so we'll we'll get to that. Well, the funny after. thing is, we were talking about how we didn't mm-hmm. want the omelet, and then we saw like a whole table getting omelets, right? Like, just omelets. Just <laughs> all yeah. six people got omelets, and mm-hmm. I I have a feeling if we were to get the omelet, it would have been fresh because I think that's why that table was sitting for a while. That's what I was yeah. commenting on. I just saw everybody on their phones. They're like, "Oh, it's just people." Like, I wonder what they're waiting for because they were like all on their phones, so they probably hit. A certain point where they were like, "Okay, we're gonna get like we have we we have nothing to talk about," you know. So, <laughs> we're here. We sat no down put after two hours, out. and then yeah, no order food. Wait for it. <laughs> yeah, and then all those like you know, we just saw a sea of plates of like omelets come out, and I was like, "Oh wow, they all wanted omelets." Yeah, and um, I was gonna say like I don't think that that's strong where it's like family style. So yeah, you kind of have to get stuff like individual, you know. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, and yeah, I, I I don't know. Like overall, I really like the food. It was good. I like that. Uh, I got the ube horchata too, and then Angelo got the agua frescas, and I tried both. And I actually, if I was to do it again, I would probably get the agua frescas. Uh, I'm sorry, the horchata like for the road, and then I would get the agua frescas to mm. like dine in. That would be a good move. And I- maybe even get a yeah. I was gonna say I got, and the then I was gonna say they also. Oh no! Sorry. What was it? I was gonna say like I also got like the, I forgot about it almost uh, the Briard Ube Wan Ube Wan IPA. Yeah. So it's a play on Star Wars, but Ube, and that for me was um, uh, kind of actually like it was a nice rendition of a flavor put into a craft beer. Mm. I, I mean, like unless mm-hmm. you're expecting like Ube Halaya type of like level of Ube flavor. It's definitely not it, but also IPAs are, you know, more on the hoppy side and they have like stronger, uh, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> they also have like stronger flavor profiles. So like to an ube in itself is almost 
it's delicate mm. but not if that makes sense oh, like <laughs> it's always hard to describe ube to people because you think of it and you're like it's it's ube right. like it's the flavor ube, ube. ube. Right. but then when i've seen how people you know translate them into like you know the trader joe stuff or all the other um things that are trending now mm -hmm. it's like that's not the ube that i grew up with but i can see why it tastes like that mm. if that makes right. sense yeah like to oh, that, that does it's if I have to go by like, you know, calling something by um what is it called? Uh a color. It's purple vanilla. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's the way to put it. Yeah. I feel like that's the best way I could describe it to people. It's purple vanilla because it's sweet. Mm -hmm. It's um it's a very it does have familiar notes, but it's not distinctive either. Like if you were to get, let's say, like a strawberry versus a raspberry, right. you know, like you can tell which one is which, but Uba it's like it kind of just lends itself to, I mean, it's a, it's a, a tuber, it's a mm -hmm. purple potato right. in a way. Right. So I can't imagine what potato would lend to, you know, specific flavors. <laughs> no, but it was, Plug myself uh, in real quick. I mean, it's not like, and the, uh, and the beer is brewed uh, by a brewery that's out in Glendale. So it's, uh, it's local. Yep. Brew yard. Brew yard. So I have to go there. I need to try it because they would not let me walk away with. A I know they said can. no alcohol <laughs> past this point. Sorry, you know. Like oh, I'm not gonna drink it in the car. I swear. I need to give it to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, if that that makes us have to, you know, go visit Jamie by train or whatever in Pasadena, then go to Glendale. I am all for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. Yeah, train would be safer, guys. <laughs> and definitely. Yeah, Let's see. Cheaper, so. Um. Yeah, did, so it sounds like. Did we get anything else? No. Oh well, we. Uh, no. Well, we talked to the the, the French, French toast. toast. I mm -hmm. like the French toast. It, I just was like felt ridiculous. Like, ooh, not sweet. I like it. Like. <laughs> That's how you so know we're, we're, we're say, aging. It's, it's, not really, sweet. it's not that sweet. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ooh, not sweet. Um, I liked it. I think that the sauce was a little too runny. Mm. Like, I mm -hmm. wonder, like, can they punch that up with some agar agar or something right. like that? Or, uh, I don't know, actual, like, just make it a little bit potato thicker. in it. Yeah. Like some... Yeah, I had a feeling they wanted to smooth it out. Because, yeah, I thought about that, too. Like, maybe if they put actual ube yam, but it would make it greeny. And I'm sure mm -hmm. someone's going to bitch about how greeny it is. Right. So. And, like, and when you think of just like this, you think of, like, you know, whatever this pastry is. It's, like, sopping up all yeah. of the... Um, whatever the creamy part is. But then at the same time, when you make a French toast, you're also like, in a way, sealing it off because you're searing the custardy parts of this bread. So it's not, I would, I think I wanted more from it, but like Jamie's right, like it should have been thickened up or maybe the sauce could have been different. But, and, you know, like this is just me like kind of getting into like my own head about like the backgrounds of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so, but this, it, like I would say the performance of this one, it, it's a yes from me dog. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. Um, would, would I wait three, how many hours was there a, a timer running of how many hours we were waiting for until we got sat? So from sitting to signing in or from Signing in to like sitting. even from your bed. You said you signed in from. I your signed bed. in at like ten thirty. Okay. Yeah. And then we sat. That's a long time that we waited. Yeah, and then um, we sat around one twenty-ish, one fifteen-ish, sure. or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I like the idea of ha being able to sign in like on the website and just waiting until they got called. But there was like a few moments there where I was like, "Oh my god, if they don't make it, mm -hmm. I have to restart myself in the line." Right. And I was like, they would be so pissed, you know, because <laughs> we missed it by like five seconds or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like how um, that one, whoever they were calling Jasper or something. And then like, she's like, Did Jasper, Jasper. Him? Nope. All right. Moving on. Yeah. Like, yep. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that then that that would have made me upset if I did that, especially with how far Jamie came. Mm -hmm. I would have been like, I'm so sorry. I mean, I came by subway, so I was happy about that. Okay. Like, I really like. I thought it was really cool how, I mean, to me, it really opens up, you know, where I can go, totally. you know, mm -hmm. um, or where we can meet you and stuff. So I was fine mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Like I was fine with that. Like it's just, so, it's just exhausting, like driving, you know, cause it you is. have to put all your attention to not, uh, not crash. <laughs> and, um, I got to just like zone out like on the subway. Right. So I liked it. 
I would do it so I could like knit or something or read a book like you do or watch TikToks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I was, I was really just like reading a book. Uh, I like took two books with me and I was reading. I was like uh, just like jumping between chapters and then just like letting my mind wander and stuff like that. But um, it was funny because like I really didn't have Bangkok lady like in my head to go. I was kind of like, OK, like we're going to try Long Beach places. So I kind of like. It was almost like putting in shelves. Like, I was like, okay, whatever. We're going to see Bangkok Lady, like, another time. We're going to go to mm-hmm. Long Beach. But the fact that we were in the OC and we're like, yeah. oh, let's go see the Bangkok Lady. And then I was also like, you know, it's very typical for a lot of places to run out of food and just mm-hmm. be like, oh, we're 86, but we have this. Yeah. And so I didn't even know if we were going to be able right. to get it. So when we were just like, playing around with it, like, I, I like that there wasn't, like, much, like, expectations to the Bangkok Lady mm-hmm. also. There was also that moment, like at least for me, like when we were at Lola's, it was like, okay, we shared, you know, these dishes. And if you got the dishes by yourself, would you, let's say we didn't share, you just got your own plate. Like, would you say you felt fulfilled by that meal or was it small enough to be like, yes, we should get something else? Oh my God. I probably wouldn't have come up for air and just ate really fast and then... <laughs> No, couldn't have tell, told you like what everything tasted like yeah yeah the the amount of dishes we got i think was like perfect although i think like um but that's why i'm glad you suggested the bangkok lady because it was like okay this was somewhat enough food but i have room for something else but i want something else that's not this cuisine so like I'm glad you suggested I'm glad we're just like let's go like (laughs) I was shocked I was like oh shit we're going I don't know I think I've just been like staring at this place for so long it just seemed unattainable because like I mean to go to Westminster from from Mm -hmm. Pasadena I mean and you know the only time I've been to Westminster has been with like my sister-in-law who's like she's Vietnamese Mm -hmm. so a lot of times there are parts of like Little Saigon where I don't know how to read Vietnamese. Right. Right. Like, yeah. right. You're like, is this even a restaurant? Like, what is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it good? Like, can I, what if I don't know, even know what's in there? Can I ask? Like, is it going to be weird? Is it going to be mm-hmm. offensive? You know, I still, that still kind of runs in my head or like, do they have the patience to, to, to talk about the dish to someone that may mm-hmm. not have had it before? Because I think that's a, uh, that's something that happens when people like employees get tired and complacent is like, they just are just like, Oh, so it's this, you know, it's being like, Oh yeah, I like that. It's this and this, this, you know? Um, so it's like a, I think working in the industry, like you're always like mindful Mm -hmm. about like, am I annoying you? Like, sorry if this is inconvenience, but I really want (laughs) to know. Well, you you would also hope that they would help you because you could just be like just standing there and trying to fend for yourself. And then if it, helps you know move the line faster say you got in line and you had no idea what was going on then i would appreciate that help from them but yeah i get what you're saying because like i I feel like that's why i haven't tried like half the places like down there or at least like chinatown and other things Mm because and like some of like these like really cool like little korean places that are like near me in the oc it's like they are all like it's in Korean and typically I have my Korean friend come with me and I just sit there. I'm like, this is delicious, you know? Yeah. But then if I wanted to go back there without her, then I'd, I'd be like, I have no idea what you ordered last time. Like, right. <laughs> but I want to have it again. What is it? You know? And for her to like spell it out for me or whatever in English would probably be even more difficult. And I know they have like the, the keyboards and can just be like, here, I want this, like, give me this. And like, yeah but again like you're saying there's like kind of this hesitation of wanting to um but yeah anyway so like uh we can uh bang call lady okay so what are your i guess critique or reviews well, on it well tell me first um jamie this was on your list for a while um are you both obviously have heard of it but um uh, where did they start and where did they come from? I've like, I had not heard of them before. So like, how did they, Oh fuck. I don't know. Honestly. Oh, okay. I have no clue. Well then how did you find I out about it? I just know them? that they, Instagram. I have a feeling them yeah. moving into the brick and mortar is what is getting that garnered mm-hmm. more. I wouldn't be surprised if they started off as a pop-up too. And then they were setting up and then they finally got a brick and mortar because when I started following them, I started seeing posts like, hey, we got a brick and mortar. And I was like, ooh, ooh. okay. Mm-hmm. And then I just started to see that 
Um, and then I started to just, I mean, from, it's funny because from discovering Bang Hot Lady, I discovered what Bun Seo mm. is. And I've, mm. I've always wanted to have that as mm. well. So mm. I found a place called Bun's, Bun Seo Kwan. Yeah. Uh, sorry to all of you right. Vietnamese exactly. listeners, that might not be right. Um, <laughs> but that's what it is. And that's in, that's in the SGV. Yeah. And, uh, when I was, I was sick for a while and then when I, I was okay, I wanted to, to try it because I also mm-hmm. had the time cause I, I didn't have work and they're only open until 3 PM. So I tried it and then I was like, what else is around here? Like, what's a really well-known thing? And that's when bang mm-hmm. hot mm-hmm. comes. Mm-hmm. And then, and then TikTok, like famous TikTokers started eating there. And then, mm-hmm. I, and then, you know, like I, I clicked in the, uh, the hashtag for Bangkok and then I was like, Bangkok lady. And then it was like, you know, like people like ASMR, like they're just like <laughs> fucking eating it. And I was like, right. I hate, I hate looking at people eat food, but like, damn, that looks good. Mm-hmm. You know, um, started, I really didn't think we were going to go see her. Yeah. It like, started from a thought... Facebook food group. Oh, did it? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Like, nice. Mm. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's when I I decided to. Yeah, I was like, let's go. And I mean, the place looks really simple. It's it's very like cut and dry. There's uh there's really low stools. Wow, like really low stools. If you guys have any uh knee or pelvis issues, just take that shit to go. Right. Eat it or in the car the or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Like, it definitely opened up my hips just being that low and having mm-hmm. to get up. Um, I would definitely, um, they do sell drinks there, but I did see a table, like, go to a, I think one of the people went to, like, a liquor store to get some tall boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if I'm you're going to get something, water. like, what, whether it's, like, Agua Mineral or Coke or something like that, buy it from the Bangkok people. Um, yeah, their their sons were actually the workers, and they're super... Super proud of the food. Super nice. I was just talking to them. Mm-hmm. I told them like, "Hey, that was so good. I came all the way from from Pasadena. I'd like to try this." And I've been like, "I've been following you guys." And they said, "Oh my god, thank you mm. so much. Like, yeah, please yelp us. Like, um, we're looking to expand." <laughs> yeah. And then I said, "Never." <laughs> and you know, and I said this on my Instagram, and I, and I'll say it again. Like, you know, I I really hope people don't copy them and try to make money because these people are genuinely like love what right. they do. Mm-hmm. You know, you can just really tell that they have like a lot of pride in it and and like it just, they just look really grateful for for like people like eating it and like you know i mean i even when i'm at a restaurant like that i work at and i see people like loving the food like it's just like such a great pride and they mm-hmm. they have that now um, yeah and that that was fucking good like i want to go back there on sunday or even saturday Saturday, I got invited to some free screening of the Bear season mm-hmm. two, Ooh. and a part of me wants to bring like a hundred pieces. Oh to my eat god! While okay. I watch, hey, all hey, right. Hey. You want some? You want some? Yeah. No, I'm not going to. Oh, share just for it. yourself. Uh, people okay. will come up to me like, "Oh, it's a bank hot lady." <laughs> yeah. that's not the shit in the OC. I'm going to be like one of those people that brings fucking like, you know, that brings in and out to a Dodgers right. game or something like that. Like, I would actually do that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I Good. really like that place. Or it's like when you were younger, <laughs> and uh, I would say like this is one, probably almost a decade ago. It's when like someone in the family went all the way to Glendale to go get Portos, and you were like, oh, oh my god, this is that's so absolutely <laughs> like yeah, like even honestly, I would even bring that to a family party. Yeah, and it was so crispy, like it was crazy because it's like you don't think that something like that that looks like that as simple as that can stay crispy mm-hmm. and like you know even to the last bang cut that we're eating it was yeah. still crispy mm-hmm. that was, was yeah. good that was yeah <laughs> so ju- like and i love the sauce if you on their instagram it shows a highlight reel of what their sauce is and they like it shows them like deep frying shallots i fucking oh, love deep fried onions i I, yeah, I don't want to degrade. It's you know almost like it's opulence. You know, like you know this was something so rich and so good, <laughs> and now they say fried shallots, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. But like you know, like my little plebeian mind was like, it's my ploy with something else. <laughs> like I don't know why, because it was I like a kind of like a sweet stand. and sour sauce that had chunks only, in it. <laughs> I only like my ploy. Um, I guess when I'm eating lumpia or something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally, when I go to a another Asian restaurant and they they enclose that with my takeout I usually end up just throwing it away with the trash mm. yeah oh man but yeah that but yeah that, they they make it in that Bangkok yeah. was 
to okay so in comparison to the one i had today so if i have to see yeah, where the did crazy, you go i went to this place called uh asian foodie land i know it, it's is that a restaurant it's a, or it, like a... it's, it's yeah no. yeah it's a restaurant okay. it's actually kitty corner oh, from uh the corner of disneyland uh okay. it's like a little it's a little strip mall that has like this like ancient Italian restaurant there that's been, I mean, as long as I've been alive. Mm -hmm. So it's called Mari's. So if any listener out there is familiar with like Mari's Italian restaurant, it's like next door to it. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I have to sing the praises of the Van Cot lady, like this is what my like review is going to be. And you can just guess the opposite of what I had. Mm -hmm. So for the Van Cot lady, what I loved about it was that you got the pieces of, you know, the shrimp, and the ground pork, something about it was so savory, but something about it had like this, this just touch of like sweetness. And then I can't remember if Bonco's made with like tapioca or rice flour, but you know, you kind of like got that chewiness, you got that tenderness. And then, you know, I definitely science behind the type of sauce that they served it with, uh, like also with the herbs that it served with. So what did we have? We had mint, we had their, um, the Vietnamese pickles, cilantro, cilantro, daikon, and carrot. That was pickled daikon and carrot. Yeah. Was there anything else? It was no. like mint, cilantro, like let romaine. Is that romaine? Green. No, it's green lettuce. I think. Okay. I, I know. It's That's it. Here. It's very yeah, simple. Super. Right. It's simple, but like there were so many flavors in it. And then I went to this place because I was like, I have to get Bangkok again, but I also want to try something different because okay. like. Yes, you can always go to the goat. Yeah. But like <laughs> you you should it's like I have to open up and see like, you know, this is why they're the goat or this is why, you know, mm. this is like and I'm not knocking Asian foodie land for their food. I think because I had these high expectations with the Bangkok lady, right. it kind of made me uh, like expect more from the Asian foodie land. And um so the Asian foodie land was it was sweet. There was no pork in it. No. Um, okay. There was also a sprinkling of something like white and red on it. So I'm assuming that could have been sugar mixed with some sort of spice. But I'm such a wussy for spice if I'm not expecting mm-hmm. it. I I could bite that whole thing and it wasn't spicy at all. So I don't know what this red um, powder would have been. Yeah. Um, the herbs that were served with were perilla leaves, mint, green lettuce, and then the one I think they called the fish herb. I tried it. I had to try it again for myself. And I, I can see why I have a lot of friends who are not fans of mm. it. It It's kind of, it is fishy in a sense, but it's more so like, it's musty yeah. to me. And I think that's what I like tried it. And I was like, mm, okay, never mind. I'm going to take this out. And you know, you get, I think you get like 12 pieces for like 11 bucks. And so it's like, it's not a bad appetizer, but because I had the Bangkok lady, I had my side by side. I think I definitely had a bias. Yeah. So yeah, it's like if you hadn't had it before, I think I think Asian Foodie Land is like your 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 easy uh, your training wheels to get into the Bangkok world. But then when you have you know this the flavors that the Bangkok ladies like Bangkok's had, then it's like now it's like a next level. Mm. So I wasn't disappointed pointed with it but like i it, it could have yeah, been better <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah you were I, like i ate that like whole thing just because i was like yeah, I, was all right. oh, <laughs> I, I mean i had to put like a little soy sauce on, on there because it was very like two-dimensional oh, to me like soy it, sauce because okay so the, the 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 cool thing though i will say about asian foodie land is that they're kind of like a fusion so like if you've had um garlic noodles they actually have a version that's with shaken beef mm. or they have a, a version that's with like lomo saltado oh. mm. so they have a lot of fusion and then one of my other favorite dishes it's not um it's not around a lot of the vietnamese restaurants you have to like go looking for it it's ban hoi which is like the vermicelli noodles kind of sort of made into sheets Mm -hmm. it's really cool looking i love it um but the only option they had was fried pork belly served with kimchi interesting that sounds good it all i was eating i was eating the lechon crispy parts on the outside so i was like but i had to leave something behind because it was getting really rich and like the the kimchi was like a nice palate cleanser but it kind of just seemed off Mm. because you had like you had these like rice noodles you had the pork belly then you had the herbs and whatever 
I from all the other things that I was kind of putting it all together. And then the sauce was, I want to say might have been something kind of like a hoisin with like a little bit of spicy in it. But other than that, it was like, there should have been something else or there could have been more. And I think also their version of the, um, you know, the daikon and the carrot, I think they had papaya in it too. Wow. It's like loaded. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. So like, I, I'm yeah, happy to take yeah. you guys there because they have a dining menu, but they also have a to-go menu. Mm-hmm. And I think they have, um, like as one of their signs, it says, uh, like, the best it's like the best place for the disney foodie or your favorite place of mm. the disney foodie like the, the fact cool. that it has the word disney yeah, yeah in the sign i was like you have to say <laughs> yeah. that you know like yeah like your disneyland if you want to eat something else like this is a destiny they're trying to make it a destination yeah right um right. i would love to give it a shot one of these days if, if i'm ever out there you know because um yeah when you're down here for the bank I, would, holiday. I think that's kind of cool <laughs> I'll go get it i mean i would definitely make a trip just to fucking go to the bank fuck i would get bank hot for disneyland dude i would yeah not a bad idea Asia Foodie Land also does like i mean bonnies. i don't know if they can they could let me in with that pizza box but i'd make it Girl, work. i would bring you my backpack cooler and be like all right i got the tupperwares mm, and layer it yeah <laughs> parchments <Absolutely. laughs> like <laughs> that's the move ice pack for the lettuce <laughs> yeah um yeah, they're real. And then I was going to say July 4th, they ended up doing some sort mm-hmm. of a community event oh, cool. where it wasn't just them. It was like a couple other people and they're giving the Bangkots out for free. And the line well, was wild uh, like absolutely. to get Bangkot. Yeah. But it was really cool to see the mm. footage of them cooking it because yeah. it's got to be a very proprietary secret ratio that they got going of magic. <laughs> Because it just shows them cooking in an apple scabber yeah. pan. Is it like I'd imagine they've got like the you know like the Japanese takoyaki like ranges, and then just like flipping no, it. No, it, it's literally like several apple scabber pans, and uh, I don't know if they're they're watching this, but they should definitely look into getting a welder to make them like something. a custom. Yeah, like custom, they don't. Uh, that hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's time that they could start looking into right. that. Guys, if you're right. listening, they get their own like twenty by hire twenty me for consultation. Yeah, their own twenty. <laughs> yeah, you can hire me for a consultation on your restaurant. But yeah, um, I think that they need to be thinking a little outside the box and bigger if they want to get bigger. But it sounds like they're gonna get bigger, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if within the next six mm-hmm. months you see someone called the Bangkok <laughs> dude. You know, it it'll just be a matter fucker. of time, I'm sure. Right, all the. Yeah, I, I, and that's gonna suck. But you know, I mean, it's either gonna, it's either gonna enhance and and mm-hmm. have more of an awareness of Vietnamese food, which is cool, mm-hmm. or it's gonna be like, yeah, I saw those uh, copycats. They suck. Just mm-hmm. stick to the Bangkok lady. Yeah, is is that how you would feel like when people talk about like hot chicken and stuff? <laughs> yeah, it all sucks. Um, <laughs> minus a couple places, but I mean, I'll be honest. I I don't need. I haven't had hot chicken since I stopped working there at Voldemort Chicken, and uh, I have no desire to eat it. I love like, chicken. Like, I mean, I just had hot wings today um, from Hot Wing Cafe in Pasadena, and they're always good. Uh-huh. Uh, I love Korean fried chicken. I love karaage. Yeah, yeah it's Japanese fried chicken. Um, I love Jollibee, mm. so I do love Ooh, chicken. Yeah. I just uh, like, the spices and shit like that. Like you can only have it. so much. Like, I don't need to. Yeah, uh, I was surprised like you didn't like burn a booty hole or something. I purposely, I was good when I was working. I wasn't willing to oh. die for that place, you know, yeah. in more ways than one, which probably explains why I'm at my corporate job right now. But mm-hmm. uh, that being said, yeah, it's really hard to. to uh, it was really hard to replicate it, and some places we were trying to said like there there wasn't any love like put into it. It's just a bunch of people with fucking mm. dollar signs in their eyes, right, and right. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. why a lot of those places uh, are not surviving, you know, because they're not in it for the long haul to get better. Right. They're just in it to like they make jumped on the bandwagon. The buck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I got I hope to God Bangkok is not one of them at a certain I, I point. I'm thinking right now it's like what do you think is right now, Angela? Like a Smash Burgers, fucking Detroit Pizza. Fucking Bidia. Bidia was oh, huge. Absolutely. Like, there's a big old Bidia boom. I mean, that fucking night market that we went to was like, uh, did we count the Bidia tents? At least, yeah, at least three <laughs> of what, and they were probably, I don't yeah. know. Like, why would you want to go to three different Bidia events? In the same, it's so yeah. so filling. I was kind of sad. And, but, 
Yeah, I was kind of yeah. hoping for more variety on that that yeah. weekend, but that that weekend I was okay because we ended up going to Everson Rice, and that was a great smash mm-hmm. burger, and those biscuits mm-hmm. were that bomb. Was, we ended up going biscuits. to Gorilla Tacos. That was also a really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, those great like tacos and stuff like that. Yeah. We, I would have gotten more uh, dessert, but I was just like we were at my <laughs> limit. Oh, <laughs> we were stuck. Yeah, that ever since. Yeah, we that I was a back. legitimate bang bang. Yeah, <laughs> to to eat at a night market, to go to Everson Rice, and then to go to uh, Gorilla. Gorilla. Yeah. We're like Anthony Bourdain or something yeah. like that, you know. Our dumb and hungry tour. We should do that. Just we should do another. Yeah, one like it that, was but a dumb and like, hungry Things tour. in like close proximity, so that we're not like driving all over. That was a good like, well, maybe like ten ish minutes from each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. Or something maybe mm-hmm. less than that so that that was perfect maybe we should try something like that like in orange county like i really do want to try more of little saigon mm-hmm. but again like it's like you go and you get fun or you get dim sum when you're out there and you're like that to me that's already like a full meal right. like I, I don't need any more after those two things especially dim sum mm-hmm. um i would like to go to the vietnamese night market that's out there mm-hmm. when is that we can try that like i, I think someone's at the door so, sorry about excited. that um i would like to get i mean based on the the tiktoks i've seen they sell like grilled sea snails i love mm. sea snails you do uh i would like to get that yeah okay. i mean it's a bitch to pick out yeah. but they're tasty uh what else do they have they do have bun sale i wouldn't be surprised if they have their own version of bangkok out there i mean it'd just be uh they have bull a lot i think it's called that's like grilled beef mm-hmm. skewers oh yeah I think, like, like I think that would be lock. a really good pairing to eat with Bangkok would be mm-hmm. beef skewers. I don't yeah. know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would I would like to go there. If we do it, let's uh, let's try like Uber from like my place or some other location because I, I, as much as I love Little Saigon, like the parking can be horrendous, mm-hmm. like depending on where you're going. And then, then and of course, like a night market, like a community night market like that would be even worse. So we we shall plan that. That one would be very cool to try. Hey, we should like yeah, bring a Vietnamese cool. friend to like ex- explain things to us. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah. Let's make it happen. Do we know any Vietnamese people? I do. That's the one that introduced me to Bon Sale. But uh, okay, but she's also got a baby, so I have to like run that by her. But I, I could see what other friends are doing and see. <laughs> Can you oh, I, I have a friend as well that actually I do have a friend that that would probably want to go. It depends though. She's like always out and about. Um, but yeah, okay. I can approach that upon her on a on a weekend weekend day. Yes. When is it? When is it? Saturday or something? I believe it's on the weekend, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday. One of those pairs of days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you don't work retail, so you can go. I can go. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say I will also preface that uh, USC football is coming up. And uh, um, I will be very, very busy almost mm-hmm. every Saturday until Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. But not Sunday. Mm, okay. But not Sunday. <laughs> but I also may be, you know, doing stuff on Sunday like recuperating laundry, right. meal prep. Mm-hmm. So, um, Getting ready for the week again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So starting late August to like September, it's going to be a very like tight, tight couple of week- weekends. So mm-hmm. we'll figure it out. Okay, good. Okay. But it sounds like we had a real good um, last couple of weeks of, uh, of good food. So I think we have more to look forward to and, uh, and try. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. want to like discover stuff that I don't know. I mean, I knew Everson Rice and Grilled Soccer were good just because I've been there before. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those to me, those were like swishes. Yeah, like absolutely. I knew we'd find something that we'd like. Uh, but I would I did kind of do like you know, venturing the unknown. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because back in the day, you kind of like look on Yelp, right? And read and be like, hmm, I guess I'll try that because there's like fortune mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. I mean, now with the internet, mm-hmm. it's kind of like you can see what the food looks like. You can see what to get, what not. Because people will tell you like the ins and outs and stuff. So in a way that kind of takes away from the experience because like mm. sometimes you want to discover that shit yourself. Uh, yeah. So I would like to find mm-hmm. more places that we may not know. Okay. Yeah. Totally down. Okay. I Googled it Asian Garden Mall in West, uh, was that Westminster or Garden Grove, whichever, same, kind of in the same area. Every weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 7 to 11 p.m., June 16th till September 3rd. Okay. So we're, we're still at the beginning, but let's not wait too long on it. Yeah, I'd be down for a Friday, Saturday. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Friday night could work. I wonder if that's Friday slower than like a could Saturday work. Sunday. I would. I would. I would take like a subway or something like that. Mm-hmm. And make Angelo pick there me you up. Go. That's the move. That's the pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> Have Angelo Get Angelo to pick you up. Pick you up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here, so um, no worries. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We come for more more of our food adventures and experiences. Um, this music. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you have any feedback, reach out to us. I'm at Dumb and Hungry. This is the scene where the guy's pants yeah. comes off. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. Have a big old bangkok dangling. That's in front right. Of it. <laughs> yes. Bangkok for sure. <laughs> Anyway, but you can reach us here uh, at Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry, at Blunt Sarcasm, at Cat in a Jar. You can email us at hi at uh, You can. F- yeah, tell us what you guys want to eat. Everyone. That's right. Yeah. You can- Come correct us. We're open to it. You can find us on uh, on YouTube and and all where all the uh, podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. I'm Jamie. I'm Cat. And on your next food adventure, remember to try. One of each.